Hello, Lou. Guess who's coming to dinner? Hello, Louisville. Welcome back. Another history-making day in Louisville, Kentucky. Black history-making year. Welcome to Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. I am your host, Janice Miller. And today, we've got something very special for you. We have very special guests. I think all my guests are special because all my guests are special. We've got... Um, you know, there's a new uh, complex that's going up, that's up, almost ready to open at 12th and Jefferson. And this is the brainstorm brainchild of Reverend Dr. James Etta Ferguson, but I get to call her James Etta. What's up, Sora? Hi. How Welcome, you doing? and thank you for allowing me to come join you today. I it's am honored to have you. Yes, Sorora, it, it is a privilege, and we just found out that we are Sorora, so yeah, that makes it yeah. even more good thing, exciting. Good thing I, I signed, I had my business signed up in the directory. That's right, that's right. <laughs> so tell me, tell me what made you want to conquer, to, to take on this challenge of, of bringing about this complex to the city, and, and how you got the name. Just, just tell me the whole story. Well, as far as bringing the complex to Russell, uh, there were multiple reasons. First of all, um, our uh, historic church, uh, which was built in 1895, mm -hmm. was in disrepair. We had molding issues and lead pain, and uh, we had uh, we were doing a lot of uh, ministry and mission. Uh, but the church was falling down around us. Mm -hmm. And so we needed uh, a way of bringing some um, uh, sustainability, financial sustainability to the church. Mm -hmm. And so one of those ways was uh, partnering with the United Church of Christ, uh, where they provided support for us to uh, do this uh, economic development project. Okay. And okay. Uh, and in the meantime, uh, I was a, a part of the Bingham Fellow, and we were discussing projects west of 9th Street. So that gave right. me an opportunity to see what uh, we were lacking in the West End, which was a whole lot. Uh, right. Along with this investment, uh, there were a lot of amenities and resources that just were not there for uh, the residents of Russell. Mm -hmm. And so uh, between uh, the need uh, for the church and the need for the community, uh, the village of West Jefferson became a reality. All right. So MOLO, what does MOLO stand for? MOLO means welcome home, and it comes from the Casa South African language. Um, okay. I was uh, I did mission work in uh, South Africa in 2008. Uh, I went over there to work with those who were affected uh, by HIV and AIDS, and also uh, did some work on race and reconciliation. And there was a, a woman that we visited who had uh, been affected uh, with uh, AIDS. And when I walked into the house, I was only one of two black missionaries. And when I walked into the house, she said, Molo, mama, Molo. And I did not know what that meant at the mm -hmm. time, uh, but she was crying. And what I found out, it meant welcome home. And so oh, that wow. stuck with me. And that's what we uh, named uh, uh, our CDC because uh, our thoughts are whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome to come back into God's house. And so you're going to be really welcoming back vegetarians. Yes, I hope so. That is the plan. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, as part of the um, committee to um, uh, meet the needs of the community, mm -hmm. there was agreement that was established that those residents who were in good standing when they left Beecher Terrace would be able to come back uh, to the new Beecher Terrace once it was built. Right. And so the the difficult part is getting people to come back because they have been relocated all around Jefferson County. And also um, 
they had some hesitation in coming back because who wants to come back to uh, no resources right. where they have been, where they've had restaurants and grocery stores and all of the other amenities. And so the challenge is for us to make them believers that it's worth for them to come back. And that's one of the things uh, we are excited about with uh, the village of West Jefferson Street because we have created a complex that has a whole lot of resources for the people. And we hope that uh, that will be some encouragement for them to return. All right. You know, I had thought about, I was hoping that they would do some condominiums. I said, wouldn't that be something? I'm born in Beecher Terrace and I can move back to Beecher Terrace. People say, where you live, Jess? I said, shoot, I live in Beecher Terrace. Well, you don't know, give up. Don't give up. There's still a whole lot of land left to be uh, built on. Well, I'm, so, I'm hoping they do something like some condominiums. You know, I didn't yeah. see any garages. So I, I said, well, maybe <laughs> not yet. Well, it's on the on the drawing board, so there are going to okay. be some. Okay. Okay. All right. There are even going to be some um, uh, traditional houses there, along with uh, duplexes and high rises. But it is a multi generational, multi income um, mm -hmm. type of of project, and right. so there's going to be something for you. Okay. Okay. So tell me about some of the businesses that. You have brought to to Mo, you you're gonna call it Molo Village, right? No, it's called the Village at West Jefferson. Okay, Molo Village is the developer. It's just okay of the project, and okay. we are the owner as well. Um, but the actual name of the project is the Village at West Jefferson, right. and okay. we are excited because uh, we have. Um, the the uh, dripping crab, which is Darnell Ferguson. Darnell Ferguson, and yeah. he is an awesome. Any relationship chef. to you, darling? No, no relationship. Okay, but I, I'll claim him. <laughs> but no, <laughs> I hear no you. he 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 isn't. But he is an awesome chef and already owns Super Super Chef out on Super Boys Town right. Road right. and has uh, the stadium in Columbus, which is a sports bar. And another uh, uh, venture in Alabama. And so this will be his fourth restaurant. And it will be a sit down restaurant to accommodate up to 75 uh, clients at a time. And so we're just excited about him coming. We also have a Park Community Credit Union who has made an, an intentional uh, plan to do uh, financing of Black entrepreneurs and Black home ownership. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. And so they are moving their downtown branch to the village. And so we're excited about wow. that. Wow, that's, we, we that's a big time. Of, yeah, right. we have a whole lot of banks that we approached, but nobody wanted to actually come and have a, a presence in mm -hmm. the community except for the park. So we're excited about them coming. They're also going to have an ITM machine drive through as well. So that's that's good news. Oh, uh, we have um, Ohio Valley uh, Education Cooperative, which does um, uh, preschool and kindergarten for uh, 85 young people. And okay. then we also have the, um, what's the name of this place? Uh, the grocery store, the next door market, uh, which has a whole lot of organic uh, food, health food uh, coming uh, oh, that's on the, the ground floor. We have uh, uh, William Starts Realty, which is a second generation black owned realty company. And then we also have uh, he owns Leverage Lease, and um, which will be the property manager for uh, our um, project. And then on the second floor, we have Louisville Metro Housing. Uh, okay. As you know, they are the ones that are building the new uh, Beecher Terrace. And so we said, well, we want residents to be able to walk right across the street if there are some issues. And right. so they agreed to that. And so they will be there. We also have um, uh, Butch Mosby and Sponsored for Success. And uh, you'll hear a little bit more about him in a, in a bit. Uh, we have 
um, Dave Christof uh, Christensen, who is um, the executive director and president of AMP. And he is bringing a incubator uh, hub uh, into the building. And finally, uh, we just got the good news uh, on Friday. We have Norton's Healthcare, who will be bringing uh, a clinic into well, hello. our facility. And then, of course, Molo Village will have its own headquarters there. So we are 100% pre-leased before we even open the Isn't door. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. Let, me, let me do this right now. Let me bring in one of your brand new tenants, uh, Mr. Butch Mosby. What's going on, my brother? Hello. How are you? I'm it's wonderful. Good to be here. Hey, but look, I'm so you know I have to I have to put on my seatbelt, you know, uh, James Eddie to keep up with Butch. Butch I is what you call right. a show show enough for a a world traveler. <laughs> yes, taking and, care and, of business, Mister Businessman. Yes, and like actually, he was he was the first one that signed the lease uh, into Did the he? village. Yes, so bravo, he bravo, saw the vision kudos. right along with us. Look, I saw him on Facebook talking about he had to get some furniture up in there. I said, go ahead on my brother. I said, they're getting busy. Well, how are you, Butch? I'm Welcome good. home. Thank you very much. And, uh, you know, uh, Pastor Ferguson, I've heard you talk about Molo Village a lot, but I, I didn't really know the meaning behind Molo. So it kind of fits well, right? Me moving out of the neighborhood and then coming back home. So and coming so right home. home. <laughs> All right. Yes, made that connection. Yes. That's that's truly appropriate for you, huh? Welcome yeah, home. Yeah, yeah. Welcome Thank home. Just welcome back. Okay, so Butch, won't you tell us what you're doing? Um, your your organization, Sponsor for Success. I I met you when I was uh, putting together the celebration for the 50th Dirt Bowl. Yes. And uh, our mutual friend Nate Spencer hooked us up. Said you need to meet this brother. He's doing things. He's shaking them up, baby. <laughs> uh, and at that time, um, I was trying to do the, the Dirt Bowl event, and you helped me with that Yes, uh, through Sponsor for Success. But tell us, what is Sponsor for Success? Sponsor for Success is uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a multi-layered organization. We have um, a nonprofit organization, and we have three LLCs. But the, uh, the nuts and bolts behind the organization is we – are a group of individuals that grew up in the West End of Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, we moved away when uh, there were not a lot of opportunities in the neighborhood. So we went off to become successful in our careers. Uh, and we decided to uh, give back to the neighborhood that raised us in the form of, you know, pooling our money together, our resources, our networks in an effort to, you know, help revitalize the West End because it's not the same West End that we grew up in. And it has no, been over the years. And so instead of being a, uh, you know, pointing fingers and talking about, you know, what could be done, we just decided to play a role uh, in being a part of the revitalization. And so we do anything from helping students who uh, come up short on extracurricular activities with, you know, financially short on fees. We raise money to pay for that. We try to acquire abandoned houses, rehab them and bring them back to life. Uh, to get involved in commercial developments, et cetera, et cetera. Anything, we would get involved with anything that will help improve uh, the community. And so our mission, which is a very broad one, is um, to improve the living uh, and economic conditions in um, underserved communities of Louisville, uh, primarily the West End. So, that's so the you're kind of like uh, my favorite saying from Jerry Maguire, help me help you help me to help you to help that's right. me that's right <laughs> that's it you know it's a it's a it's a perpetual it's a spinning wheel that's round right. and round we're supposed to help one another we're supposed to be there for one another that's and right. i guess i'm one of those people that left home and did exactly what you did but i haven't joined sponsor for success so i have to see about getting an application yeah well come on in we'll, we'll take you absolutely okay. well thank you i just i mean i must uh I, i'll take this moment to to let you know that I have officially been accepted on the board of the Kentucky Center for African American Heritage today. All right, congratulations. congratulations. I'm excited about that. Right. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. So, so um that's one that's that's sponsor for success. 
but you've got another piece, Butch, you got to talk to me about because this hits kind of close to home. Okay. That but, uh, the Joe Hammonds project. Yes, the Joe, the Joe Hammond project. So, um, yeah. So, again, we do anything that helps improve the community. And, um, you know, one thing that happens when new development comes into um, a neighborhood, which you see a lot of new development coming in, uh, mm -hmm. then, you know, that usually accompanies conversations around gentrification and displacement. Um, and so when you start talking about displacement, you also uh, lose the neighborhood heroes, right? And so Joe Hammond was a, a neighborhood hero. Um, he was more than, you know, just a jazz club owner of Joe's Palm Room. He was right. an entrepreneur. He was in politics from the backside. Real uh, estate. Real estate. Uh, and so along the line, along the years since he's passed in 1997, uh, his legacy has kind of gotten lost. And so we were fortunate enough to uh, find his story. And so what we want to do is preserve his legacy uh, and continue the work that he did. I mean, it was amazing once you look into the, all the, the different projects that he was involved in when you study the history. Right. Uh, and it just all of a sudden stopped, you know, when he passed away. And so we want to, you know, we consider ourselves um, adopted grandchildren of Joe Hammond. Okay. And we want to continue <laughs> his legacy. Um, and so the, the different types of works that we do, we, you'll see a, you know, a Joe Hammond project here, a Joe Hammond project there, a Joe Hammond uh, reunion. You may even see a Joe Hammond mural one day. So, so it, it's all in an effort to continue his work and preserve his legacy. Yes, because he was he was he was like a godfather. He was he was he mentored a lot of uh, business people in this community. He and mm -hmm. Mr. Lenny Lyles. That's right. You know, Louisville really has rich heritage. Right. You mm -hmm. know, we have. Yes. I mean, educators. I mean, I saw somebody on the um, uh, the Beachetarian, uh Facebook page. Look, mm -hmm. we were talking about one teacher named Miss Taylor. Mm -hmm. who was my kindergarten teacher. But my cousin, who is four or five years older than me, there was a Miss Taylor who was his fifth grade teacher. Mm -hmm. So another girl said, no, my teacher wasn't, you know, she wasn't the same one. Anyway, my cousin straightened it out. Mm -hmm. But what happened was that we honored these teachers because we remember them so vividly, mm -hmm. right. you know, and what they gave to us and what they taught us. You know, coming from that little school that's around the corner on that was on 13th and Liberty, mm -hmm. you know, in Beecher Terrace. And mm -hmm. Beecher Terrace meant a lot to, to me growing up and a, a lot of Louisvians that, that grew up in that area. Uh, Miss James Zetta, it's um, it's one of those places that, you know, I remember growing up where the doors could be left open. Uh, yeah. I remember yeah. going to Baxter for my tap dance lessons mm -hmm. and I crossed the street mm -hmm. alone. You know, I don't yeah. know how that happened, but, you know, I was <laughs> fairly independent at that time, you know, yeah. but what that community meant, that was a community within a community, That's you know, right. that, that Baxter, the center that was there had a clinic in it. Um, uh -huh. It had classes, all kind of different things, and it, it taught arts and culture. Uh -huh. And, and, and that's what the West, anything West of ninth street, needs we need our culture brought back to life right right you know and 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 we're hoping to do that um that's one of the things that's on the drawing board mm -hmm. for the baxter community center i like you janice uh also grew up in beecher my great aunt my namesake okay. lived right there at 940 west jefferson street so i okay i, I thought god had a strange sense of humor to bring me back to beecher 50 years later uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> but but one of the things that we're trying to do is to revive the and to uh to rehab the baxter community center so that the cultural arts uh that we used to have in that center will be there um, and, and and then there's also going to be the new football uh, fields for the uh, youth and basketball courts and, and all of those things. So uh, this is not uh, the end. This is just the beginning, this is the beginning. for okay. the Beecher community. Oh, I'm, ex I'm excited. You know, it's exciting. You know, everything that's happening with the, the beginning with... Um, 
the the villages at Jefferson West West Jefferson. That's the beginning because you know remember what Old Walnut Street was like. Yes, we had everything we needed: restaurants, grocery store, drugstore, cleaners, your mm-hmm. doctor's office, your black doctor's office, your nightclubs. You had everything. I mean, I left Beach of Tears when I was six years old. So, but and I mean, the fact that I've lived to say I'm. <clears throat> 70 years old. This takes a lot for me because I, you know, some people just want to stay young forever, but I know that couldn't happen, but I'm, and I'm blessed, but I'm blessed to have these memories and they're rich memories and those, that family that you grew up with in Beach of Terrace, right, Miss James Edder? You know, mm-hmm. you still probably mm-hmm. have connections to them. Yes. Yes, I do. Um, actually, we have a, a annual festival and someone came up uh, we didn't have a, the festival last year because of COVID, but the year before somebody came up and they said, do you remember me? We, you, we used to play together in this line. Mm, no, I don't. But she remembered me and my name and everything. And so, right. you know, you do, you, you, we made connections back then that um, are a lifetime connection. And right. Absolutely. it's good, good memories. And in fact, where we're worshiping now, I don't know if you remember, Jen, this used to be Consolidated Sales. Right there. Okay. Uh, right there. Uh, Russell okay. Plaza was Consolidated Sales, but you might not remember Consolidated Sales was the Kmart of, of the Black community. Right. And that right. was the only place that we could go uh, to go shopping and it, it had everything. It, it was almost like a Walmart. It had groceries and clothing and all of that. And so the church that I pastor, uh, it was a closed community. It was uh, completely segregated. So as a child, we walked past that church and went to consolidated sales. So that church was really invisible to us. And so it's amazing to me that some um, 40, 50 years later, God brought me back to be the pastor of a church that was closed uh, to us. Right. Um, that wow. uh, those many years ago. And now, mm-hmm. you know, look what God is doing uh, through that church and in our community. So, uh, Butch, I want you to tell me, tell me how the community can get involved with Sponsor for Success. Whew, that's a loaded question. Uh, I know. There's, there's lots of ways to get involved, and it depends on... Uh, you know, what level you want to get involved with us. I, you know, I typically make a presentation. I tell everybody, I tell people what we got going on uh, from a, you know, 5,000 foot level. And then I tell them to just, you know, get in where you, where you fit in. So on our nonprofit side, um, you know, we have students um, with whatever financial challenges that they may have. Right. And so, um, if you know, people in the community or kids in the community that, are very talented on a path towards success, but parents may be financially challenging to help them stay on a path towards success. Then send them over to our way. We'll create a campaign from them, put them through our, you know, network of people uh, that are interested in helping to donate to, uh, <clears throat> to uh, situations like this. Right. And so that's one way tap into the teachers, the churches, you know, bring students our way. Another way to get involved is you can actually become a donor uh, and you can donate to help one of the students um, uh, stay on a path towards success. Uh, on our for profit side, if you wanted to be a investor and you had some cash that you didn't know what to do with or you wanted to get into real estate and you got five grand or 10 grand that you may not be able to go the distance with on your own, uh, you could invest in us and we'll pool it with some of the funds that we have and we'll go and we'll acquire uh, some properties, rehab them, and then get you your returns on your investments. Um, on a larger scale, we have, you know, big commercial projects that we're working on uh, downtown Louisville, um, a part of um, working on a deal as a part of the Beach of Terrace development, a commercial development. Uh, so if you have larger funds and you want to invest and you could invest that way mm-hmm. uh, or you can <laughs> be an ambassador with us and just tell people about sponsor for success. Um, you can be on, you know, annually we add board members to our, uh, our group. And so if you're interested in being a board member and help us build our organization, you can participate that way. So there's lots of ways to get involved with sponsor for success. 
So for those um, people that are looking for rental prop properties, how many do you have available now and how do they how do they find where they are if someone's interested in renting a property from you? Yeah, so um, rental property, we just uh, did a deal with um, the um, Humana and uh, the Urban League uh, and it's called a, a Path for as a part of the Path for initiative. And so we're trying to help solve the affordable rental challenges that are arising in the community with COVID, people losing their jobs, there's evictions right. going on. Then you've got, you know, landlords are raising the rents. And so the people that are in the community are having trouble finding affordable rentals. So we've got a few, uh, we've got some grant money so we can go acquire properties, rehab them, and then rent them at affordable rates. And so we have several properties available coming up pretty soon that we're going to finish. And um, as a part of this program, you need to go to uh, the Urban League and uh, go through their rental readiness program. Okay. Okay. And then after you get through the rental readiness program, they will send them over to us uh, to uh, see if you qualify for, uh, you have to go through the application process to qualify for one of the properties. And if you qualify, then you will get a property that is, um, a below market rate at affordable rate. And so, you know, affordability is defined as typically 30% of your household income. And so what we want to do, if your household income is X, we want to keep you below 25% of your household income so you can have, uh, you know, some room to breathe on a monthly basis or weekly basis. And some, some room to feed yourself. And it's a room to feed yourself. <laughs> so we do have also uh, more information on our website, Sponsor for Success dot com or sponsorforsuccess.org and you just go to the bottom and click on affordable rentals and then that will show you the information of how do you apply and get involved and show you what we have available so there you go okay so that's sponsor for success the number four right number four instead of for so instead sponsor of for success just want, to, just want to tell them I, I i noticed that i said i think i better tell them that so they can look for it sponsor for success dot org or sponsor for success dot com right correct. that's correct all right miss james Ed, talk mm -hmm. to me so all now right. church services aren't being able to be held you're not having church services you're doing no, we're not having church services we're doing them online and uh, i saw a Sunday. service that you had uh one day you had just a few people around and i i noticed that you had a young man uh very well known in the community who was playing the keyboards, who can play keyboards and sing and, and everything else that used to be uh, very well known in the community. Um, well, you must be talking about Melvin Shaw. Girl, please. <laughs> okay. All right. Yes. And I was just looking, I said, wow, I, I, you, you're doing wonderful things. So when, when are, we, are we close to opening? We, we just got to wait for COVID. <laughs> Well, um, are you talking about for church or for the building? Oh. Um, well, for the church, we're going to open uh, on uh, Easter Sunday. No better Sunday okay. to be resurrected than on okay. the first Sunday of <laughs> April. So that is when we will uh, begin back to having uh, in-person uh, worship service. Oh, that's uh, wonderful. Now, as far as the village, uh, weather permitting, we hope uh, to open um either late this week or early next week um it just depends on how much snow we get and how much sleet uh okay. we get because we had planned on opening the doors today uh and so uh that is our biggest challenge right now right. um but what we want to do is encourage people once we are open to come and support uh these businesses uh they are paying rent and we want them to pay rent, which yes, means we are. that they, we, <laughs> we, we want uh, people to come and support them. Uh, they have wonderful businesses and wonderful uh, uh, resources for our community. 
and uh, the people in our community are purchasing, making purchases and spending money outside the community. We want them to, in, to encourage them to walk down the street and to um, purchase uh, within the community so that we can lift up our black businesses and bring black wealth back into our community. That's right. that's one thing. The second uh, thing is, is that MOLO is a 501c3 and we do uh, programming. Uh, we have an education hub for our young people. Right now we're doing the non-traditional instruction with our young people. Uh, we also uh, do reentry programming and we have programming for our senior adults. And, okay. uh, and so we want to make sure that uh, uh, we continue to be able to provide that type of programming for uh, those in our community. And so any donations toward that would, uh, would uh, be a tremendous blessing uh, in us being able to continue that work. And then finally, our historic church, as I uh, mentioned, was built in 1897. And we have right now a lot of interest in the village, so much so that we don't have any room any longer for those interested in um, joining uh, the village. And so we are in the process now of planning uh, uh, a design for the historic church where it will uh, hold worship space, but also additional suites for those entrepreneurs that want to be connected to the village. And so we are looking for, once again, those investors like Butch has mentioned that are willing to um, use those dollars uh, to invest in uh, Russell and in the village at West Jefferson and to um, increase the number of black entrepreneurship in our community. And bring, bring those black dollars into the neighborhood. Yes. You know, we have, yes. we have a powerful monetary value. That's you know, right. If, you, That's if right. we put us together collectively, you know, we, we are a force to be reckoned with. Right. And I think I, doing this year, excuse me, go on. Well, not only does it um, is it a force to be reckoned with, it's, it's the basis for helping uh, the community overall. It's going to uh, provide money for us to support the schools, uh, for the uh, infrastructure uh, uh, of our community. So it's not just about um, uh, providing goods and services is about also bringing those tax dollars back into the community that are going to benefit other institutions within our community. Right. That have been circumvented to, to other places that, you know, need to come back to where they belong. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to tell you, Ms. James and Mr. Mosby, y'all moving and shaking. I like to talk to folks that are doing things, you know, and it's exciting to see Louisville moving, even during this time of COVID, you know, hasn't stopped anybody. I tell anybody, this is a perfect time to get whatever you want to do. Say, I, I was thinking about going back to school. Or I was thinking about starting a business. Get busy. Get busy. Time to lay out your plan. Because I right. said, I, when, the, when, the, when the doors open up, I'm going to be like the filly at the gate. I plan to be first. You know what I'm saying? I'm working on so many things over here. I said, I know my husband says, but what is it now? I said, well, I'm doing this, but I got this over here. You know, but just go ahead and work your plan. Play any work. And you always got to have God in your plan. Ain't that right, Mr. James? James Amen. Evans? Amen. You know, because if you don't have God in your plan, you don't have a plan. That's right. First things first. First yes. things first. Talking about COVID, uh, this week I'm putting together a PSA. Mm -hmm. And uh, which I don't mean to leave you out of this, but I don't think you're in the 70 bunch yet. It's, it's all good. I enjoy watching. <laughs> but, Miss James Zetter, if you had the opportunity to um, speak to uh, the African American community, our seniors, about taking the shot, do you? How do you mm -hmm. feel about the shot? Well, I just got my second shot today. Okay, and hold so on. I, uh, hold on. Butch, I'm going to take you out because I'm going to let her be on the screen by herself because 
I want to hear what you have to say on your own. Just a minute. Okay, now. Is that right? No, no, no. Let me see that. Okay, I'm trying to do this. James I just keep wanting to say James Wait. Okay. Okay. I'm not doing it right. Oh. Okay. I'm going to do this. Watch that. Now. Okay. I want you to tell me what you feel about that COVID shot. Talk to me. I am a proponent of getting the COVID shot. I just received my second shot on today, and I thought I was going to just shout all over the place because, <laughs> uh, you know, while I know that um, there are still risks, I feel as though a burden has been lifted off my shoulders um, uh, from uh, being severely affected by COVID, uh, even if I catch it. And one of the things that I am encouraging our seniors uh, to do is to get the shot. Um, you, uh, if you have an underlying health condition and you end up with COVID, it couldn't be fatal. And some people have said, well, I don't wanna take the shot because I don't know what's in it. Well, you know, so, you know, it's like Russian roulette. You don't know what's in it and you don't know what effect COVID is going to have if you catch it. Right. And so I personally have been setting um, uh, appointments up for seniors who are unable to access um, uh, appointments online because I feel that strongly about it. In fact, we have, have set up a, a phone number. If someone is interested in getting the shot, we will help you. We will assist you in, in making that appointment. Uh, uh, there is a clinic at the YMCA at 17th and Broadway, and they have hundreds and hundreds of appointments available. Uh, and if you call, you may not get in, but if you uh, allow us to go online for you, then you will get an appointment. And so just in the last uh, two weeks, I've made uh, over 15 appointments just for seniors over Ms. the age Jack, of 70. You, do you have that phone number available with you? I, I don't have it uh, because I just got it, but you can call my cell phone. I'm, I, I feel that strongly about it. My, um, it's 502 you know what? I'll, I'll look the number up because I went down to West Broadway as well to get the, the shot. I won't put your okay. number up, but I'm going to okay. bring Butch back in here. Is Butch around? Did you? Did he come back? Is uh, with audio only? I think. It, oh, there he okay. is. Okay. Well, I want to say to both of you, thank you very much, and your your you. uh, added blessing to the community uh, with the work that you're doing. I can't wait to come. You know, I, I still want to be invited to the ribbon cutting because I want to yes. come in and meddle and take my little camera and show everybody <laughs> what y'all doing. You know, I'm going to give you some exposure. We need okay. exposure because we need folks to come in the doors. That's right. Uh, Butch needs folks to help our kids get books, uh, go on trips that they need to do. Uh, you know, I, I know about that aspect of it. Miss James Etta, uh wants to all of the tenants to to have uh, customers. So uh, right. we have to support our black businesses. And that's the bottom yes. line. That's what we need to do. So thank each and every one of you, Butch. Glad to have you home. I, I want a mug. I don't know what I have to do, but I do want a mug. I got so, one for you right over here. Right okay. I appreciate it. I, Look, when the snow clears up a little bit, I'll come get it. All right. Okay. <laughs> Miss James Etta, I'm going to come see you yes. and give you a big hug, but I, I, I want to come to the ribbon cutting whenever that's going to be. Right. And if you want to come back, Butch, if you ever want to come back to talk about some things that you're doing that you want the community to know about, feel free. Okay. Thank you. Both of you. Right. God Thank bless you. you. Take you care. Too. Great to All see right. you. Take care, darling. All right. There we go. That's the Villages at West Jefferson. I know you saw the big sign that said Black Owned Business, but that's what it is. And that's the proprietor, uh, Pastor James Edda Ferguson. Um, 
and Mr. Mr. Butch Mosby from Sponsor for Success. A lot of things going in Louisville. Think people are moving and shaking up things and getting things ready for when the community and society opens back up. And we need to be, we need to be there for them. We need to be supportive of our black businesses. We need to um, be positive and uplifting. You know, we have to uplift each other. You know, in whatever we're doing, in order to progress, move forward. Um, we talked about the COVID vaccine. Um, I want you to tune in on uh, Wednesday. We're going to have some some PSAs that are going to start running uh, through Jantastic Productions. Uh, people that you know, trying to let you know that if you're a senior, uh, you need to think about taking that shot. Um, we take our second one tomorrow, right? We take our second shot tomorrow and uh, no problems. Um, you know, you just have to protect yourself. It's a, uh, you'd rather have it than not have it. That's, that's like they used to say about, about those uh, having a peace. you rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. That was like one of those things my mama told me once upon a time. But I want everybody to uh, just pay attention to what's going on. Stay healthy. Protect yourself. Mask up. They say we're a double mask now. Okay, because this new variant is um, could be quite quite dangerous. So we've got we've got to do what we've got to do to 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 make things change. You know, it takes it takes a movement to make things change. So this movement about staying masked up and staying six feet away from each other, and not having a whole bunch of house parties and people over there because you know them that you think they can breathe on you because you shouldn't be letting people even that you know breathe on you. Because you can still contract COVID. Simple. Just don't do it. You know, and then we can get back to where we were or even a better place, you know, because that's called the future. So let's get ready for the future without COVID. On that note, I say to all of you, have a blessed day. I'll see you back here on Friday. On Friday, we're going to have uh, Miss Ann Hagen Grigsby, uh, the executive director over at Park Duval. And she's going to tell you some more about COVID and what services that they offer. So on that note, I'm going to say bon appetit. Guess who's coming to dinner? It's dinner time somewhere. I'll see y'all later. Bye.